In today's video, we're going to have a look at some swing trades that are setting up beautifully this week. We're going to talk about the week prior and we're going to talk about some legislation that's coming in that is a game changer. <laughs> What's the crack everyone? Welcome back by Ozell. Hope of course you're all well. Before you ask the question, have I dyed my hair? Look, I woke up like this. I'm as surprised as you. I don't know what happened. Say no more about it. We had a fantastic week last week. We had ABML go to the moon and we also had Premier African Minerals. Let's just have a look at last week's performance then. We can see here some serious uh, poundings. Tesla gave up all its gains that I had last week. Amazon sunk 8%. These are big market caps, guys. These are big players. For them to put back 10, 8%. It's huge. Google, 5%. Microsoft, 4%. Is it any wonder the market sold off hard? We can see, or even our, there was no real sector that was clear. The only one that reasonably did well last week was healthcare. And that's mostly due to we're kind of coming into flu season, people are getting their vaccines, there's some stuff being passed about new COVID variations and all this. So that's probably why that sector did well. But generally speaking, it was a bloodbath. And if we actually look at the world one, just to get a bit of more perspective, it was a bloodbath across the board. Everywhere was just taking a pound in, but this was a big week of uh, monetary policy, UK is going to pause. Inflation data is slightly better than what most people expected, which isn't really a good thing for the markets because it shows that they can continue to rate hike. Um, while they didn't rate hike this time, they did say, look, there will be more to come still. It does look to be playing out that the Fed pivot will not happen this year. It's going to be next year. So we'll look at the indices. We'll kick it off with the NASDAQ for a change. You can see here that we have continued to sell off. It's been brutal. It has absolutely been brutal. We're down by 6%. Kind of at this level, you could potentially say that there is a support level here. Kind of touch, touch, um, and touch, touch, and here. Whether that plays out or not, I'm not entirely sure. I wouldn't really hold on to that. Again, this is the one here that we want to watch out for. It could potentially sell off down to there. God, it would be pretty broad if it did. Um, but that is only another 3%. So it's only half of the, the pullback that we've already seen. So potentially, guys, it could be another brutal week. We are got another week left of September, so don't be surprised if that happens, but you've got to see a bounce on the 200. That is, if I was swing trading and I'd be waiting for there, um, you can see here the last time we sort of got above it, you know, we tested it, we tested it, and then we broke. And from when we broke um, to the highs, you know, you picked up 26%, so it was a nice push. You know my thoughts on it. I'm going to stick to the charts. I still think we're in a bull market. It still looks good. I still think September's playing out. The negative news, the Fed stuff, I feel like all that has just been bubbling up. It's not been the data and the information that we really wanted to see. And the SPY is really no different. It's actually in kind of scenario playing out. We can see that we have fell down about 4%. Now, last week, we did have this sort of buy looking to come into the market. But with the data and all the bad news, it's just one <laughs> toilet. We were massively oversold here. We we're now massively oversold here. The last time we got it in the round, these levels was kind of twiddled along. And then we did bounce about 6%. So that is potentially what could play out here. We are in that area. MACD is not quite there yet. You can see here that we crossed over here before we got the pump. So if you are watching this RSI, thinking about buying, as always, keep an eye on that MACD. Wait for the crossover. Wait for our indications to come on and then buy. And just like the NASDAQ, it's not a million miles away, 2%. You wouldn't see that. Easily could do that in a week. This could play out that it's going to touch. I'd watch out for that. I wouldn't be buying any of these here for a swing trade at this moment. Just look at how Prem has performed though on the week. Really, really good. 30%. Lovely bit of news comes out. We'll cover it in the different videos. But long story short, the mill is now installed. So that looks good. This is going to be support. It's going to be hard for us to get above this. 0.52. It was very difficult um, to get above any other time. We have been trying to get above this for a long time now. It's been... Jesus, 95 days. So, you know, it's been over three months of trying to get above this. Any bit of news, any bit of pump has brought us back down. If we can get above this, we're going to fly. But look, that's enough about primary African minerals for now. Started this video, then I talked about some legislation that has come in. First off is Sunak Defence Climate Policy Shift. Disgusted with the change of uh, carbon emission policy. It's coming down to oil and money and you know lining people's pockets um, and the hell with with the environment and what we're leaving behind for generations to come but that aside talking about generations to come elon musk's Neuralink seeks patience for a brain implant trial wow like this is where do you sit on this i'm um all for technology and moving forward to the future this is the old quite like it's a wee bit close to sort of like terminator robotics sort of ch um, changing people but like the benefits 
behind it, the reason he's promoting it, like initial goal is to help people control a computer and cursor keyboard with their thoughts. I don't know about all this. Let other people be the guinea pigs. I'm more than happy using uh, the mouse. And look, I've even got one on a friggin' wire. That's how old school I am in this house. So yeah, um, the, the main things for me is if it can do help with dementia and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, that would be um, something that would be very good. Depression, schizophrenia, autism, obesity. Well, obesity is not hard, just don't eat as much. But that aside, if it can help people with these types of things, yeah, look, that's, I'm all for that. I'm not entirely sure I'd be wanting these things put in my head just to save me, you know, not using a mouse, but each to their own. Huge news that came out this week is the online safety bill passed in the UK, soon to become law. Uh, again, this is sort of slipped under the wire. The whole RB scandal, um, his name is Russell to start, can't say too much about it. A lot of YouTubers are getting the videos taken down about him. I don't know if you've heard about it, demonetized, all this type of thing. Um, Crazy, do actually genuinely think there is a bit of an agenda against him. Um, but I hear I'm not talking about public figures on this channel, that's not what this is about. But this whole thing has just slipped under the wire. They are pretty much trying to get access to everyone's phone, so everything they can see and look at. Uh, they're obviously saying for the right reasons, and there will, of course, like anything, be pros and cons to this. But looking at the bigger picture, doesn't it just scream a wee bit more about trying to get control? Look, it's a digital world we live in. You can't live in this world without being hooked up to digitally some sort of way, whether that be your phone or even contactless payments, you're you're locked into the system whether you like it or not. Um, so when they put out rules and regulations like this, you have to sort of take a step back and go, where could this lead us? But look, you have to draw your own conclusions on that. What to expect in the week ahead? Well, coming up this week, home price updates, Fed's preferred inflation gauge, and Jerome Powell's town hall event. Before we get into all that jazz, let's have a look at some of the changes. Oil is still doing well, the stocks um, had a bad week as we know. Bitcoin um, is just sitting flat as usual. Um, great swing trades on Bitcoin if you wish to be trading it, but uh, God almighty, from a hodl point of view, Bitcoin's done nothing in like two years, it's been brutal. The latest updates on national homes will come out next week, along with the new pending home sales for August. Home sales are holding up remarkably well. I think it's just down to supply and demand. Uh, the people that wanted to buy a COVID, yes, they're paying more of an interest rate, but they're not still that wanting to move that much that they're willing to pay these strong prices. I do you think you've still got all the ripple effect of these interest rates still to play out? I don't think we're anywhere near that yet. I like to sort of chat to people and talk to people. I was out uh, on Wednesday in Scotland for um, a concert with my wife. We had a good time got chatting to a few people in the bar and we're just talking about like you know how are you finding even being in glasgow um and everyone just seems plenty of money everyone's just living their normal lives this doesn't really seem to have any ripple effect yet then i was even out last night at a funeral unfortunately it was that circumstances but i got chatting to people and chatting about their lives and there's new people buying uh, first time buyers buying homes and you know they're just yeah just getting on with it it's not as, it's like as if it doesn't matter the wages are still coming in the jobs are still there uh houses are still being bought so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not had a ripple effect yet. I do think when the interest rates really hit home and people that have been buying over the last couple of years, once they start getting these new lock-ins to new interest rates and they go, whoa, I was stressed before, can't afford it now, that's when it'll hurt them. But a lot of people were buying around COVID time, probably locked into a five-year mortgage, so we could still be sort of like a year or two out before all that happens. The Fed's preferred inflation gauge for August. Prices are projected to have risen 0 0.5 last month, up from July's 0.2 gain. They likely climbed 3.5% on an annual basis, accelerating from 3.2% in July. Core prices, which exclude volatile food and energy costs, likely rose 02 from a month earlier and 3.9% year over year. They talk about our big swing trade that we talked about last week, the one they have on everybody's watch list. Well, they came out and announced they're going to spend 60 billion. When a company comes out and says we're going to spend 60 billion, most times are not it's going to sink. Why? Because it's expenditure. And let me explain this. I had a conversation with somebody um, in the Discord, no different than like Tesla open up a new factory. And while they're both spending money to make money effectively, I see this as a bit different because a new factory is meaning more output, which means more money coming in. The parks are a bit different. This is kind of, this is what it's mostly going to be for, the cruise liners and parks. So it's like existing stuff. It's like your house is all being painted white and then you decide, I'm going to come in and paint it all gray. 
Is it going to add much monetary value to your home? Probably not. Now, yes, new parks, new expeditions, people that have been to Disneyland before will want to come. But for me, it's more, we're spending all this money now because we we'll probably need to spend the money now. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make on their annual balance sheet. That's why it's probably sunk off quite a lot, in my opinion. And because of that, we never got above this. And yeah, the thing sunk 5%. One of the questions that were asked by Dom, you're planning a YouTube video. Have a look at uh, the Great British Pound versus the USA dollar. Massively oversold. Look at where we are here. Way, way down. And you can kind of see, if you look at these here from uh, a technical point of view, the last time we were around these levels, what happened? Well, we decided to rally 6%. Kind of got loaded here. What happened? We rallied. Now, you would say from this period of time, when we bought, you know, we we're in that RSI period, you can see here for about, th about a month. Um, and the stock sideways down before it took off but these pushes all came on the back of the bull run we have went bearish and we've been bearish for a while we've actually fell quite hard since the bearish thing nearly two percent in the last nine days for the last time we went bearish here in august 21 what happened was when we fell below we tried to get up we touched our head a couple of times um, we just couldn't get above it and then it just went it just went trousers down um, and that was not good at all and if you actually look here how many times we were below these areas you could be thinking oh push a buy let's go let's go and it just kept selling i'm not saying that that's not going to push on what i'm saying is it could last a lot longer before it becomes a buy what i'm actually going to do here is i'm going to just set an alert so i just go to this here i go to my indicator again all access um, in the trading course for these types of things once per bar close a buy signal and this is on the day chart i'm just going to hit create that will alert me when it becomes a buy and i'll reassess things then but look at the new zealand dollar and the japanese yen a while ago september the 13th till now um 12 days it has become a buy but we've just pushed above all the moving averages see here like the macd has room for days to go and the rsi looks strong as well so that could be a decent swing trade if you wanted to potentially open a position on that um, even just to try and see if we could get to above these sort of levels that were back in July. One to have on your watch list as well potentially would be the Euro. Look at this, if we can get bullish, potentially this could push. So I'll keep an eye on that. I'm actually going to put an alert. So again, just go in, go to your buy sell indicator, once per bar close, the buy signal, crossing, um, because I wanted to cross the 200. So that's that set up and we'll see where that potentially goes. If anybody else has noticed this, but let's have a look. We are at new lows on PayPal. For this year we're at new lows and i noticed it because what i've been trying to do is clear up my stocks as i kept saying on the channel um, and if you actually look at this here matterport new lows teledoc and these are all you know very good earnings recently as well look we're at new lows again teledoc and again etsy i mean look at this stock i mean if you strip this back to five years what, what from the highs to the lows i mean it's it's one hell of a given these are these are good market established companies like beyond meat at new lows and you can see, if we look at all of them though, they're all massively, massively oversold. And you look back to when there were these kind of levels, April, what happened? Well, we got a good push, but then it ripped right down the whole arse of it. So I'm looking at this and I'm kind of going to myself, I really feel like we're coming towards potentially a bottom. You can even see it on Matterport here, a bit of a bounce. We got a decent green day um, on yesterday. And you can see buy symbols have coming in. There's only so low a stock can go and beating down stocks like to pop, like to turn around. It kind of feeds into the whole September bad month, maybe another grim week, those indices, everything's going to hit the 200 and then we're going to push. I'm just looking at all the indications and I just don't think we're going into a bearish market yet. I feel like we're going to push in October, see into the, the end of the year and we'll worry about reassess things then I appreciate that was quite a long one today this week we're going to do a video on argo blockchain our favorite crypto miner to see what's going on there and i'm probably going to have to put some sort of premier african minerals video out as well so if you like these videos please like subscribe help me grow the channel if you want to learn about all this trading and how to swing trade and all that the course is down there which gives you access to all the indicators and a lifetime access to the discord as well Failing that, if you even just want to get into Discord and get chatting to us and sort of an uncensored version of the channel, then feel free to subscribe to that as well. If not, just give us a like. That would be great. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.